The secret to achieve the filmic look on a digital photo lies within the tone curve tool. More specifically, the lower left point which is responsible for the shadows and darker areas of a photo. If you lift the output to 10, you will achieve that famous fade that every film photo has. Don't go above 10 because you're going to ruin your photo. Stay in that lower range of 0 to 10 as an output and then build out your edit from there. Now that we know the secret, let's jump into our software of choice and start creating a film look. First things first, go to basics and change the camera profile from Adobe Color to Adobe Neutral. As you can see, Adobe Color has a certain contrast and saturation, and I want to decrease that by using the Adobe Neutral profile. So double click to select. And now since I want warm tones in my photo, I'm going to type in 6000 Kelvin in the temperature slider. And a bonus tip here, 6000 is a safe value you can use in almost any daytime photo if you want warm tones that don't look like a blurb of yellow and orange. Now for tint, I don't want any of it, so I'm going to click and type in zero. Now I'm going to increase the contrast, but not go overboard. Increase the highlights, increase the shadows above 70. Decrease the highlights, but keep it under minus 50 and increase the blacks almost to the shadows value. Now I want a little bit of texture, decrease the clarity and decrease the dehaze, but keep it under the clarity value. Now for my photo specifically, I want to decrease the vibrance and the saturation because I'm going to add saturation with the HSL sliders later. Now let's close out of basics and go to the main course, the tone curve tool. Click on the lower left point, click on output, type in 10, click on the upper right point, click on output and give it a 240 value. Now let's build the S curve. One point here, one point here to maintain. Now let's decrease and get our desired contrast. And this looks good. Now I'm going to add one last thing into the tone curve and that is on the blue channel. Hold Alt or Option key if you're on a Mac. Click a point at this intersection on the grid and at this intersection on the grid. Then one last point in the middle and drag it down. Remember, if you drag it up, you add blue as the grid shows, but if you drag it down, you add yellow to the midtones area. Perfect. Now that we're done with the main course, close out and go to color grading to change the luminance values. If you're in the three way view, click on one of them to get to individual view. And we're going to start with shadows where we're going to increase it to around 50. Then we're going to go to midtones, increase this also to 50. And lastly, highlights, decrease it, but keep it under minus 50. In this case, for me, minus 35 is good. Blending and balance, we're not going to touch. So close out of color grading and let's start adding the colors we want to the photo. Next stop, calibration. I'm going to shift the blue primary to more blue than aqua. Increase the saturation matching almost the hue. Now for the green primary, I'm going to go more towards yellow and increase its saturation. And the reds, I'm not going to touch. So close out of calibration and let's go to HSL. Here, I want to increase, but not too much, the saturation of the orange orange slider and the luminance, increase yellow saturation and luminance. Now, since I have a forest in a photo, I don't want to have a yellow green hue. I want to have a more green aqua hue, and I'm going to heavily decrease the saturation and luminance of the green values. Now to recover the sky, shift aqua more towards blue, increase its saturation and its luminance. Now on the blue slider, I'm going to shift it more towards aqua, but not much. Increase the saturation and decrease the luminance. Purple and magenta we don't have, we don't touch. Close out of color and let's go back to color grading and now let's start coloring. In the highlights, I want a teal tone, so I'm going to shift somewhere around here and increase the value of the saturation slider. Don't go above 20 because as you can see, you get the extreme effect. So I'm going to keep it under 20. Okay, 17 seems to be a very good value for me. Now let's go to midtones. Here I want a yellow orange hue and I'm going to type in the exact saturation as the highlights. And for shadows, I want a darker blue tone and I'm going to give it the exact same saturation value. This looks perfect but I think I'm going to tweak one more setting. That is the contrast. I'm going to increase it more towards 50. That's better. Close out of basics. Now let's go to detail, hold alt or option key. If you're on a Mac, click on masking and drag it out. Everything that is white will be sharpened. Everything that is black will not be sharpened. So I want this much to be affected by the sharpening and I'm going to increase the amount to around 60. Noise reduction and color noise reduction I'm not going to touch, so close out of detail. Go to lens correction, enable remove chromatic aberration, close out, and let's go to effects. Here I want to add a slight vignette 
with an increased roundness and a very much increased feathering. Good. Now, the last touch, grain, because we're going for that filmic look, which film has grain. Increase it to around 70 just to see the effect. Let's go to 50%. Now, if you want to have fine grain in your photos, especially daytime photos, increase the size to 35 and decrease the roughness to 35. This combination works perfect. Now I'm going to decrease the amount because I don't want that much grain. So I'm going to keep it between 60 and 50. It works very well for this photo and it's pleasing for me as well. Now press Y on your keyboard to see a before and after. And that is one way to achieve the film look on a digital photo. Now, if you want this process to be a little bit faster, I've created a free preset, which you can download right now from the description. Now, before I go, don't forget to press the like button because it helps the video a lot. Don't forget also to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any future videos I make. And one last thing, here is a tutorial on how to achieve the Blade Runner look. And here is a really cool playlist I think you might want to watch.